that what God established on earth also happens in heaven. We know that there is no high priest on earth. So all of that has been moved up to heaven, where Yeshua, the great high priest, is daily taking his own blood, his own blood offering, our grain offering, our fruit offering. And he's taking that to the Father daily. Not just when I mess up. Not just when I ask for it. Daily. As I come to him, he's going to the Father. God was both, or Yeshua was both man and God. He was both a king and a priest. He loves us more than he loved life itself. I don't even think we can wrap our minds around that. He gave up his own life. He came to earth. He didn't have to. He came to earth and died a death on earth so that he could experience it. So that he could say, I understand you. I really, really, really understand you. I understand what you're going through. I understand having a fear of death. I had it. In the garden, as I was praying, I feared death. I wanted my father to take that cup from me. I didn't want to die the next day, even though I knew I was going to. I didn't want to die the next day. I understand not, I understand not wanting to. I understand that fear that you have. I can relate. I can relate to being tempted with all of those things. I can relate to what goes on in that world and why you have the feelings that you have. I understand. That's the God that I want to serve. That's the God I want to honor. So many times people portray God as this unruly tyrant who says, this is the way it is, this is the way it's got to be, this is the way you have to do it, this is what you have to wear, this is what you have to do, And I'm not going to accept anything else. That's not God. Otherwise, he would have stayed in heaven and said, do it right or don't come up here. Right? It makes me feel good to know that Yeshua is in heaven as the great high priest. And every day he thinks about me. Even on the days I don't think about him, he still thinks about me. I don't think we we can fully grasp that either. I mean, he, he says that he will bear up our illnesses. That's saying, you know what, you don't have to, to, to be sick, I'll do that for you. You don't have to do all of those things, I'll, I'll do that for you. He, although he's a king... He serves us. He's thinking of me and he's thinking of you each and every day. He spends time, his time, with me. And I don't deserve it. I don't deserve his time. All the things that I do wrong, why should he consider me? Why should he think about me? But he does every day. His desire that each and every person would come to know him. And that makes me feel good to know that. To know that all those people that I'm praying for, all those people that I love and I have compassion for myself, he's thinking about them. He told Peter that you'd only know that I'm the Messiah because God showed it to you. That means he showed himself to me. He came to me and he said, I want you. Every time one of those people came to me and I rejected them, he sent them. He sent them to me. He told somebody to go, go out of your way and go talk to him. And they did. And I rejected them every time. And it took him coming down to me. It took the Holy Spirit slapping me upside the head and said, wake up. 
open up your heart. Stop closing it off. I blamed God for so many things in my life. I blamed him for everything. My grandfather died. It's God's fault. He was a man of God. He was a preacher. It's God's fault my grandfather died. I, I fell away from my dad for a long period of time. My dad was a Christian, and, and we, didn't, we didn't talk. We couldn't converse. That was God's fault. God changed my dad, and it's his fault that I can't relate to him. I blamed God for everything. Until the, God, the day God came down and said, wake up. Quit blaming me for everything. Know that I love you and I care about you and I want you to love me back. That's what the big idea is. That's why he did all of everything he did. And it makes me feel good to know that he still loves me, he still cares about me, even though I blame him for everything. I still blame him for stuff. I still do it. Old habits are hard to break. I still do. Why is God doing this to me? Why is God putting me through this? Why is God giving me that? And then it takes somebody else to come and say, hey, stupid, God's not doing it. You are. And I repent. But you know what? Even after I've blamed him and I realize how stupid I was, he still loves me. And he forgives me. And he's going to take that offering right into the Father. And he's not going to call me stupid. He's not going to say, here's stupid's offering again. <laughs> the idiot did it again. No, he's going to say with compassion, my son Jason, he made a mistake. He repents of that mistake, and here's an offering on his behalf. And the father accepts everything that's brought to him by the son.